Hi, my name is Bernard Judge, and today, April 21, we're doing the Chicago History Oral Project about Richard J. Daley, 1955 to 1976. Today, we're interviewing Robert Soldat, who for a number of years was administrative assistant to Richard J. Daley. Thank you very much for being with us today. Oh, my pleasure, Bernie. All right, please, uh, for our permanent file, state your name for the record. Uh, Robert J. Soldat, S-O-L-D-A-T. All right, thank you very much. Um, why don't you, we start by you just sort of giving us just the very tip of the resume okay, in your long career. In my long career, I'll, I'll, I, my mother and father had a grocery store at 35th and Low, And I came out of the service, was going to school, and all the Irish politicians on Low Avenue were customers of my dad's store, including Daly, Danaher, Finley, all of them. And uh, they saw that my rapport with the consumers I, I, in the neighborhood. They said, we ought to get this guy involved in politics and government. And they said, why don't you start coming up to the ward office? You know, so I did. Became a precinct captain and became the aldermanic secretary and then was tapped to be the administrative assistant to Richard J. Daly. And what years were those? Had to be six. I mean, with Daly, mm -hmm. uh, it had to be 64 to 69, okay. or late 68, after Danaher was elected clerk of the court, which was in 68, and I went on board with Danaher in 69, stayed there till he passed away, and then Finley became clerk of the court and stayed with him till I reached retirement age. Then I went to work for Attorney General Neil Hartigan and stayed with him for a while, worked on his uh, governor's race, and then worked under Clark Burris, and then retired and am living happily ever after. <laughs> Still in the 11th Ward? Nope, nope. Moved out of the 11th Ward after Richard J. died because Finley was then clerk of the court. And he came to see me at my house. I lived on 35th Place. And he said, uh, what do we do now? And I says, well, you're certainly not going to become committee in the 11th Ward because Rich was active in the ward and you're headed a circuit court of Cook County with about 22 or 2300 people you're gonna have to get your own base so he used to come in on Mondays and say what do you think of Thornton Township I said well I don't know about Thornton you know I'm a city guy I'm used to city precinct workers and all that stuff and then he come in and said how about the 12th Ward I said, well, that, they're having, uh, you know, 12th Ward. I don't know, Swinarski's there. And I don't know. Then he came in and he says, you know where we're going to go? Lyons Township. I said, where in the hell is Lyons Township? And he said, oh, it's 39th to 87th from Harlem Avenue to County Line Road. So I looked it up and I said, there's 17 villages here, you yes. know, 17 separate fiefdoms, you know. But we did. And we went out there and I said, well, I'm going to move out here because he's my boss and uh, I moved out to Lyons Township, lived in Willow Springs 33 years ago. I bought a house in Willow Springs and have lived in the same house for 33 years. And then, and then for a time you were the Lyons Township Committeeman after, Correct. after Morgan after, resigned. After he went to college. Right. Right. Yes. Yes. And uh, then, and then uh, I gave up the township to a fellow by the name of Steve Landick. And uh, I just had enough of it, you know, and it sure. was, you know, politics, Bernie, has changed so, you know, when you <laughs> you call up elected official, you got instant response, probably from because of where I was from, the 11th Ward. Yes. But then out there, you wouldn't get a return phone call. I said, who needs this stuff? You know, so I just said, you know, nah, I'm not going to do it. Well, so then if your dad ran that grocery store, then you probably knew Richard J. Daly when he was a very young man. I knew him when he was county clerk. Okay. Or maybe just a little before he became county clerk. He used to come into the store on Sunday mornings. My dad had to keep the store open on six and a half days a week because there was a firehouse across the street at 35th and Lowe and he had a, my dad was one of them industrious Lithuanian guys that I got to be open for the firemen. They're going to sure. come in for meat. And Daly used to come into the store. Mrs. Daly was a great customer of my mom and dad's. 
and also the Finleys and the Dannerhurst. They live right across the street. Well, so Richard was married to Sis by then? Oh, yes. Oh, okay. yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. And the kids from, let's see, I knew all of the kids, didn't know Pat that well because she was in the convent. Mm -hmm. But I knew Billy, and I knew Richie, and I knew Michael, and I knew El Ellie, and I knew Mary Carol, because they'd all come in the store because we had ice cream and candy and stuff like that. And, and that store is not there anymore, is it? No, it's not there anymore. But I think every time I go meet the fellas in the neighborhood, we meet every Wednesday, I always say, I think I'm going to open up that store again because you guys don't even have a, a market around here. Because <laughs> my dad took pride of the good meat he sold. And they came, they came from, and he made great Lithuanian kielbasa. Because oh, Daly used to kid me. He said, how's that kielbasa coming, you know? <laughs> yeah. I, kielbasa is, uh, is very good when it's done right. It's oh. It's just superb. He used to make it Friday, and I forget how many pounds he used to make, and people came from all over the area to buy his... Kielbasa. Um, all right, so now, um, so you knew Daly from the time he was, before the, before he was the mayor. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about uh, after he was elected mayor in 1955, and um, he, was he the 11th Ward uh, uh, committeeman? Yes. All right, so. Eddie Nihill was the acting committeeman after the mayor was elected. Right. Mm -hmm. But he, in fact, was the committee. Member. Yes. Oh, definitely. All right. I'd like to hear about that time, if you have any anecdotes or stories you could talk about that. Well, the things I look that were kind of great, we used to have, prior to Election Day, we'd have meetings on Saturdays, Saturday morning at 8.30. And the ward office, 11th ward office, still where it was, 50 years ago is still there right across from Schaller's Pump. And the mayor make the final speech before election. And he'd come in and he, he had this knack of, he was a great, he made himself a great orator. And he'd rile all the fellas up and the girls and uh, you'd, you'd want to go out in a precinct and work. That's the type of charismatic quality he had, you know. And uh, he didn't come around the ward office too much after he became mayor, except for these Saturday meetings or when we ever had a, another meeting, you know. But uh, that was it. And uh, then when I went to work for him, shortly thereafter, I started working with him. And one of the things that always sticks in my mind, we had a precinct captain by the name of Stubby Sheehan, 37th and Wallace. And Daly was a great reader. And he read about some, Stubby was going blind. And he read about some doctor in California that had done some research on this new type of procedure. So he called me up to the office and says, Bob, get a hold of Stubby. Make reservations. I, I got an appointment with Stubby to see Dr. So-and-so. And I did it. And, and he says, oh, yeah, by the way, give him some walking around money. I think he gave me a $100 bill or something, you know. He was that type of guy. Drive down with him occasionally in the morning. We'd get off maybe on, oh, I want to say Michigan and Madison. Mm -hmm. He'd get out of the car and we'd walk to the office. Most, most times he'd stop at St. Peter's Church. And we'd walk down the street and there'd be a piece of paper and he walked real fast. You had to really move to keep up with him. He'd stop and pick up that paper and put it in the litter basket. He was so proud of his city. What time were you doing this in the morning? What time? Ah, uh, 7.30. 7.30? 7.30. You'd get, in, you'd get in the office after stopping over at St. Peter's. You'd get in the office about 8.15 or so. Mm -hmm. Was there a mass at that time or you just stop in and say a prayer or something? There was a mass. I think there was a 7.30 mass, I want to I think. But mm -hmm. we wouldn't stay for the whole thing because he had probably people lined up to see him, you know. Right. But he was, uh, he, I, like I say, I told you downstairs, he was just... A wonderful, wonderful person to work with, and generous. He was so generous. We'd uh, we'd do a straw poll for the election. Me and the fellows that worked with me at the ward office, and we do a. In fact, we used to use boxes that said AP poll. You know, and we would we. In fact, we brought the results to him. We'd go down to his basement Sunday evening to show him the results of the poll, and he'd study it and study it and 
That's when Hanrahan was winning and he was losing to, that was one of the incidents. He was, he lost to Carey. Right. Bernie Carey. For state's attorney. For state's attorney. We picked up the trend. In a couple weeks' time, the both weeks showed that Hanrahan was losing it. And Daly says, oh, my God, look at this. And we, you know, we, 63rd and Cottage, Lawrence and Broadway, oh, uh, a whole great city and suburban area that we'd run these polls and bring the results down to him. And he was, I always remember coming, come on, Bob, have a sandwich. Have a, have, you, want, you want a drink? You know, he was just a gregarious, nice, nice man, you know. So now, these polls that you did mm -hmm. for the mayor mm -hmm. were, were done by yourself and other political folks. It wasn't, I mean, and your, your uh, genius was that you knew the territory. Right. So right. that you could mix it on your own, so you'd have a, a mix of votes? Mix of votes, you know, 63rd and Cottage, uh, Lawrence and Broadway, uh, downtown, State and Lake was one of the stops. And you'd get a good cosmopolitan mix of the people's feelings. You know, you'd have these votes in 200 ballots per location, from what I recall. That 200 we did. ballots from location. How many locations? Oh, it had to be seven. Seven? Yeah. So you got roughly 1,400, and, if, right. and then you'd, com you'd collate that? Co collate that, uh, make up a report, bring it down to his basement Sunday night because he was always interested, see how things were going, you know. Sunday night? Yep. Mm -hmm. this would and then Monday, he would make his calls to the elected official and say, hey, you better get moving here. Spend some money on radio or do this here, you know, that type of stuff. I see. Yeah. I see. How accurate was your uh, poll? It was so close, it was frightening. Did you create that system, or did, or did someone else already I have think, created it? I think Danaher and Finley created it. Is and that they, right? They kept it going, and we we came in. We kept it going because we had the 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 uh, uh, the structured thing that they uh, that they uh, had done years ago. Sure. Mm -hmm. Daily was something. He uh, another incident that I recall. And it, till this day, they probably remember it. There was someone running for something we did, got all the petitions in, got them notarized, everything, and we left them out. And Daly must have came in that night and took them. Finley was the ward secretary that time, and he said, Buddy, let me see the petitions. Buddy says, looked at someone else that was working, get the petitions. Petitions weren't there. Daly took him home. <laughs> and it always, everyone always tells the story. Always lock up the petitions in the safe. Is that right? Yeah. So somebody he, got chewed out. Someone got chewed out, and uh, he, he wasn't, uh, but it taught everyone a lesson. Sure. It was the absolute right thing to do, right. you know. When you knew him as a young man, but mm -hmm. did you did you see him at that time as a mayor someday, or did you see him as a, just a, a person who had some potential? Oh, I, I saw him as uh, as a leader. You know, I, I didn't know if it was going to be mayor or governor or, or what have you. He had that much leadership. You know, the man was a CPA. He was a lawyer. You know, I'd sit in budget hearings with him, <clears throat> just amazed. He would know that budget better than department head. What about this? Last year, you only asked for this here, and you're putting this in now. You know, he was remarkable. I said, oh, my God, this, this, this man is something. 